going on people so if you saw the last video uh, I put a new power steering pump in the car uh, it solved a little bit of my steering feel issues well today I finally got the rack relocation from FDF now this is something that uh, they just developed I believe their JZX kit is out now but obviously an IS 300 one is different so uh, Josiah the owner of FDF was kind enough to send me this one uh, that's basically a prototype uh, before the 50k because I've been kind of fighting these over centering issues with the angle kit. It's just an inherent thing when you have a rear mounted rack on your subframe that uh, you basically have to locate it further forward in order to correct some of the steering geometry when you get to high angle. So today uh, we're going to be installing this. Uh, I have to put a diff back in my car. Hopefully we can get it towed up, maybe get it on the alignment rack next door. And um, yeah, hopefully get out to test either at GLD or maybe we'll just do some uh, shenanigans in Mexico. We'll have to see, but let's uh, get this thing open. So like I said, this is a newly developed kit from FDF. And you can see here, I have a couple of stock subframes. This one's junk, that one went into the wall. Uh, and the lower control arm pickup is messed up. But this is a stock one that's in good condition. And you can see here how far away the rack mounts. So if you look kind of where the lower control arm pickup point is here, your rack is you know a decent distance away from that so what the relocation does and that's not even all the way cut out yet uh they actually sent me this subframe to use as basically a template because they don't have templates drawn up that they can give people yet to just place on here and make your marks so i'm basically using this subframe as a reference to cut this one i have to give this one back to them um so basically what you're doing is you're taking that rack mounting point and you're sinking it in further to the subframe. Now what that's going to do is that's going to align your tie rod closer in line with the lower control arm. So theoretically that stops over centering. So basically what we got to do is cut this one up. You can see here there's about a line drawn through these two bolts so we're taking a decent amount of material but overall that's going to be you know about an inch and a quarter inch and a half of material taken off of there to move the rack forward and that should solve our over centering problem so what we did first is cut these off those little tie down straps or whatever the hell those things are and then basically just marked a straight line sprayed a little paint on there because the tape ain't gonna last and then did the same thing with the top here that's kind of our mark so we're going to cut this half first and then we'll flip it around to the other side so as you can see here this sticks out way further on here the good thing is these pieces that they reference have these slots to plug weld those actually line up these two nuts down here don't line up like they do on the jzx subframe this whole bottom section is not anywhere near where it needs to be but we're basically going to hammer and dolly this into position uh, and then these little pieces that they sent me to fill these corners are different than the JZX subframe so we're gonna have to kind of modify those to make those work or just make a plate but overall it looks like it should work we bolted a rack up to it and the rack fits so that's basically all that matters as long as we're actually able to move the rack forward we should get the desired effect so what do you think Nick yeah The plate that they sent is warped? Yeah. I mean, it, it's not like a big deal. It's just a, Yeah, just another thing we gotta do. Of course, it's warped. It's like, what does it seem?
in those camo pants, though. I love these things, dude. These old military pants are the fucking best. They're the most comfortable things ever. are basically spot on got that line decent we have to cut this whole section here off because the motor mount sits right there had the clearance for some of these nuts on the back side which hopefully that doesn't interfere with the oil pan because the my motor sits pretty low and close to the subframe but once it's tacked we're gonna pound all this back down so there's less gaps no nope. but it'll be fine beautiful making progress This is the perfect uh, welding mask, by the way. You just look through a phone screen. <laughs> Until you burn up your phone screen. Until you burn up the camera on your phone. Yeah. Is that a thing? Can you actually do that? I don't know. Mm, I hope not. <laughs> ah, in my foot! Ah! Oh, thanks. All right, so I got the subframe all welded up, threw a quick, dirty coat of paint on it just to cover it up, but you can see the difference there. Got that big plate in the middle. This kind of shows you how much it moves that forward, as well as the mount sticking out from the factory. So we got that on. I think what's kind of cool about this is they put this little plate in here, which is for the, the kind of uh, the right side, pasture side mount on this. And what's kind of cool is there's this bolt hole in here that they welded a nut to. Sorry, my hands are shaky. They welded a nut to the back side. They can do the same thing over here. So technically you can use this kit for a JZX or an IS. You just have to trim quite a bit off the top and stuff up there for an IS 300 as we found out. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I'm going to throw the rack in here. Uh, nice thing is now I can utilize factory length tie rods on this. I'm actually probably going to use GS ones because uh, they didn't send me any kind of uh, outer sleeve to adapt it to the heim joints. So uh, my buddy Jake gave me SLR sleeves because it's just a 14 by uh, 1.5 thread pitch on the inside. So that should be the same as this BMW. So basically gonna take a little bit to figure out what length inners i need but you can see here i don't know it looks kind of nice we'll see how it works all right one thing you're gonna want to check if you're doing a rack relocation i don't know uh how long a regular steering column is anymore or the steering shaft itself because this one i've modified heavily because i have basically like a stock car circle track car type column in my car with just you know a, a rod welded to the stock steering shaft but what you're going to want to make sure is that you're not using too little of this shaft here see before i had this pushed in pretty far well now with the rack relocated further forward it pulled this shaft out of the u-joint more now i still got plenty of room you can see there where the shaft itself ends and as long as there's a bolt in there uh, it actually can't pull out all the way because there's a little nub on there that would uh, hit up against the bolt so you just want to make sure that you have uh, enough in there i don't even think you'd be able to get uh, the bolt in if it was any further but i'm not like i said i'm not sure how a stock is would be with this because uh, my my column is modified which I can show you a little bit here. See, I just have this with a Heim joint mount here and then a Heim joint mount that I made back here. And then that's actually welded to the stock shaft about here. And then this is part of the stock U-joint. I actually might have a little bit better U-joint angle on that now. Uh, Cause it, not only did it move it 
further forward towards the front of the car, but it also kind of pulled the shaft at a higher level, which before I did have a pretty severe U-joint angle on the one uh, down by the pedals there. So uh, I never, I guess I never tried, well, I have moved the column up and down a little bit uh, to make sure, like put it at a different angle to make sure that uh, none of the binding was associated with uh, the U-joint. Um, but, you know, it just looks like an angle now where it'll be a little bit happier, so. All right, another important thing to do, uh, anytime you're gonna align your car or put new suspension components on it or even adjust toe, it's a good idea to center the rack. Now, I already know on this car, uh, basically where I take my me measurements from and what my measurements should be. So the way I do this is I basically stick a machinist rule and measure, butt it up inside the rack to the end of the actual rack itself or the rack, uh, whatever this tube. So, and uh, 11 sixteenths. So uh, that's, that's basically my number on this car. It should be on any IS, I guess. But 11 sixteenths on each side if you stick your rule till it bottoms out. And you can see there, I don't know if you can see that, but we're at about 22, 30 seconds, which uh, goes down to 11 sixteenths, reduces to 11 sixteenths. So that on both sides uh, means that the, uh, the rack is centered. Sorry, I'm filming this like crap because I'm laying on the ground, but you get the idea. So we got the rack in, uh, U joint is all tight. Everything is good there. Now I'm going to bolt up the rest of the suspension and then I can start playing around with tie rod setups, which is going to be a pain, but I'll show you that. All right. So I got everything all bolted back up here. You can see factory ish inner tie rods. These are actually GS ones. Uh, which I figure will work because see this lovely purple right here Yeah, uh, that didn't come with the kit. So I had to improvise luckily My next door neighbor over here had these uh, So if you look here I Should have taken a before and maybe I did have a before video, but this is like a much better angle These are a lot more parallel it almost doesn't look like it's gonna over center anymore. But I don't know, we won't know until we drive it. At this angle it might, this is like max angle. I have no limiters on it whatsoever. But I mean, it would be nice if I could run this much because in all reality, I don't really have any wheel clearance issues like this. You can see, I mean, well, it's a side view from that side. The rack is a lot farther forward. It's got a good amount of clearance through everything now. One of my issues in the past was actually with this caster arm and the old tie rod setup that had a bolt and a nut through here for the heim joint. I actually ran into issues, which is why I painted this. This is fresh paint on here. Um, I actually had to space this down. As you can see, I have some like 3 8 plate in there on that and on that. Uh, to space it down because I'm assuming that most people that run this kit or at least how they designed it wasn't at this ride height so I actually had issues where the uh, Heim joint the bolts through the Heim joint would actually hang up on this and the steering was getting stuck that way This is part of I mean, I've had So many steering issues with this car. It's like the main thing that I've been fighting ever since I uh, basically put this angle kit on and got the car running and everything. I mean, it's just constant steering issues. This kit has honestly, like it's the times that it's worked, it's been barely, barely more than stock angle. So if I could run it at this angle now, that would be great. Um, I'm skeptical of course, because of all the stuff that I've been through, but at the same time, it looks like the geometry is greatly improved so hopefully we can get that running on this much angle it feels good i might turn the power steering on here in a second 
That feels stuck. That feels real mechanically stuck. So I think that might be too much angle. Let's roll it over that way and see if we can find anything that's actually binding. Hmm. Oh, see, that's like, yeah, I got to limit it a little bit on this side. At least on this side. That's, the heim joint is just straight up jammed against the lower control arm there. All right. Yeah, we can't have that much angle. That's, that's pretty ridiculous. That's like 90 degrees. Cool. Cool if I could run that, but... It's weird that it's more on one side than the other. I don't know why it would be like that. I have everything as even as I can get it, alignment specs wise, wheel track width wise. I don't know. Like I said, we're gonna have to test it. I'm gonna put a limiter. I guess I'm just gonna start off by putting uh, these clip-on limiters on each size, or each side because these are the smallest ones that I have. Either way, this is going to be a world, worlds more than I had before. So, I don't know, I guess I still got to put a diff in and then hopefully we can get testing one day this week. We'll see. All right, so it's the next morning. Uh, I got the diff put in. I uh, towed it up, kind of, sort of. Seems like one side is maybe uneven. I don't know, I gotta probably go back and take a look at the lengths of the arms and everything, but I'm gonna drive it, see how it feels. Uh, maybe take it for a rip down the road or something if I can find a spot. It's pretty busy out here, it's a Sunday and the weather's nice, so there's a lot of cars on the road. So, I don't know, Let's see what happens. Well, once again, of course I didn't film it, but I took the car for a rip down the road and so far, I mean, I chucked it like full lock and just stood on the throttle and like kept it there trying to see if it could stick. And I actually, I ended up cutting down my rack limiters to about this, even thinner actually are the ones that are on here because I kind of tried to split it in half. So that's the old thickness. That's the new thickness, even a little less, but and this thing has a ton of angle now and it doesn't feel like it's binding anymore so i'm hoping and praying that this does it however i have to get out and actually test on the skid pad because you know that way i can chuck backies and throw a bunch of angle at it hopefully no more binding this feels like finally finally some progress being made with this thing if that's the case uh basically just gotta pull the trans again take a look at the clutch just bolt check the car, get everything ready, and then two weeks, I believe, two weeks is the 50K. So uh, if you guys wanna come out, go to Riverside Drift on Facebook, or I think their website's like Riverside Drift at Big Cartel or something. You can buy spectator tickets for it. It's way the hell in uh, Southern Indiana, Salem, Indiana but it's real nice town. There's a bunch to do, and this event is gonna be crazy. There's gonna be a bunch of pro drivers, there's gonna be a bunch of, uh, you know, big, big name grassroots people and stuff. So uh, my plan is to come away with that big prize of 25 grand. Uh, so come on out, please support them. They do so much for the drifting community. It's so awesome to have a local series, local-ish series. Uh, basically local to the midwest that runs these shootout style events um you know i think it's kind of the the wave of the future in terms of pro drifting or competitive drifting i think fd is you know fd will always have its place fd is great but uh i think the shootouts are really where it's at because anybody can enter anybody can win it's not as much of like a big money sport as fd is obviously that requires a lot from sponsorships and companies like that whereas people like me and jake who are doing this stuff on regular people budget you know just 
destroying our bank accounts in order to make these events and hopefully take home a W. And now, honestly, I'm feeling pretty confident. So uh, I'll bring you guys along for some testing if we do it, but yeah, gonna close the video out here. Thanks for watching, see you guys later.